17 months after they left Mexico, Stevens and Catherwood were back in the Yucatan, exploring the city of Uxmal. On this second journey, they concentrated their efforts on this one region of Mexico. Inching their way through the jungle, they discovered many ruined cities entirely unknown, with names like Caba, Labna, and Sail. Stevens felt they were racing against time. Everywhere they went, they found ruins collapsing into piles of rubble. Catherwood even learned how to sketch from his mule to save time. At Izamal, the artist drew the face of a god on the side of a pyramid. Years later, it was destroyed. Catherwood's illustration is our only record of it. They performed the greatest service, perhaps, in, in freezing in time a set of observations and images of a land that no longer exists. They're romantic pictures, yet at the same time, they're remarkably accurate. Many of Catherwood's renderings, for example, of the Maya at Ushmal and at Labna and other sites are the first depictions that we have of what Maya people looked like. We have no earlier record. In the town of Bolden the explorers visited an ancient well deep underground. Catherwood was so inspired, he began his memorable sketch at the foot of the ladder. It was the wildest setting that can be conceived. Men struggling up the huge ladder with earthen jars of water strapped to back and head, their sweating bodies glistening under the light of the pine torches. One of the last places they explored was Chichen Itza. Its architecture moved them more than any other city on this second journey. Most exciting of all was the revelation that this city had been linked to Copan and Palenque, hundreds of miles away. It was the first time in Yucatan that we had found hieroglyphics sculptured on stone, which beyond all question bore the same type with those at Copan and Palenque. If one could but read it. Finally, Stevens felt he had the proof he'd been looking for. The mysterious writing was unique, unlike any he'd ever seen. Now, he could convince the skeptics that the ruined cities had been built by Native Americans. These ruins are different from the works of any other known people of a new order. They stand alone. In the nine months of their second journey, Stevens and Catherwood managed to visit 44 ruined cities. gather some treasures for an exhibition on their return. But they paid a heavy price for their adventures. Malaria would haunt both men for the rest of their lives. John Lloyd Stevens would fight the dread disease for 10 years before succumbing to it in 1852. Frederick Catherwood would die tragically a few years later in a shipwreck. This is the only image we have of him. For there was another sad chapter to their story, the fate of the great exhibition they held on their return to New York. This fire started one night in July of 1842 and literally overnight wiped out the physical originals 
the, the drawings, some of the archaeological stuff, the limestone carvings that they had brought back at great labor. Thank goodness for the books. And I thank the fates every day that somebody at Harper and Brothers Publishers in New York had the foresight to heavily illustrate the book, because what a shame if the drawings had been lost. Fortunately, before he died, Catherwood issued exquisite folios of some of the drawings. They inspired generations of explorers to follow the intrepid pair to the land of the Maya. But Stephen's insights would have a different fate. His greatest intuition, that the Maya had written the real stories of their lives on their monuments, would be ignored. The legions of archaeologists who came after him were able to decipher some of the glyphs, but only those that spoke of numbers, dates, and the stars. Carried away by the discovery that the ancient Maya were great astronomers, archaeologists fashioned a picture of them as peaceful stargazers, obsessed with calendars and time. When John Lloyd Stevens had looked at the monuments, he had seen real kings and queens. A hundred years later, archaeologists saw only the calculations of anonymous timekeepers. It would take a fresh set of eyes to finally unravel the secrets of Maya carving and prove that Stevens was right. The story of Tatyana Proskuryakov is not well known to people outside the realm of Maya studies. Yet in that field, she is a giant, a woman in a man's world who saw further and deeper than her more famous contemporaries. What we know of the ancient Maya today, the exciting revelations emerging from dozens of excavations, is built on her work. Speaking of Copan, she was the first to describe its ruins as a puzzle. And she was the one who supplied the missing piece. 